Good morning, folks. The tow truck man brought us another dead horse. This is a 2008 Chevy Impala. It cranks, but it will not start. They tell me it has no spark. It had a code for an oil pressure sensor. They replaced that, still no spark. They swapped a coil from another car, still no spark. And they replaced the crank position sensor, still no spark. So, yeah, let's push it back, crack it open, see if we can fix it. Any thoughts, Max? Hey, you're no help. All right, under the hood, we've got the 3.5 liter, kind of old school push rod engine. It has the big coil pack in the back. There's three separate coils. It's a waste spark system. I think, uh, let's go ahead and We'll pop a spark plug wire off and we'll just check, verify that it does not have spark. Well, sure enough, I didn't see any spark. So now what? Should we go to the scan tool or should we go to a wiring diagram? Not sure. Here's a wiring diagram for the ignition module, which is basically that guy back there, the coil pack. And that should have power feed from fuse injection two, INJ two, should be this 20 amp guy right here. Good and good. Okay. Let's see if we can test some of this stuff on the primary side. See if the, uh, the ECM is controlling that module. Okay, that's the connector for the ignition module. We should have power feed on the pink with black. It's got to be this guy here. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, All right, pin F, A, B, C, D are the control wires from the PCM, E and F are power and ground, so E, and F. Yeah, A is orange with white. It's gotta be that one. Okay, well there's a problem. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we got power to the ignition module. Let's check the ground. Negative. We have no ground. Okay, cool. We've got a direction. All right, just to be clear, we checked this wire here, pink with black. That's the power feed from the fuse box. That one is good. Then we checked this guy here, black with a white stripe. That's the ground and it is not good. So we need to find this G113 and uh, hopefully we'll find our answer. Uh, not sure about this. So this guy here, number six, is supposed to be 113 and it's gotta be that guy right there. But what we have doesn't look like this picture. The starter is not, not in this location. It's down here and it goes in from the opposite, opposite side. So not sure our, our service data is correct. Uh, but either way, got a good ground on both of the eyelets there. 
in there. Well, you have to just take my word for it. So I guess we need to, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there it is. We need to pierce into those wires or something and see if the, the crimp at the eyelet is bad. Well, that is in fact the case. So I got nothing on that wire. The other one's okay. So I believe we have corrosion at the crimp to the ground. Let's, uh, let's maybe feed a temporary ground right to that piercing probe and just see if the thing will run. So we're hooked up to the piercing probe and that runs right over to the battery ground. Now you can't run a lot of amps through these piercing probes or these small test leads, but I think it'll work for, for a real quick test. So we'll plug the ignition module back in. There it is. And we can unhook this spark tester. See what happens. Here we go. That was kind of weird. Why did it run on like that? Uh, anyway, let's not get distracted. So all we need to do is tear apart that ground and crimp on a couple new eyelets and we should be off to the races. That thing does not want to come out of there. doesn't look that bad but definitely isn't working yeah there's your problem okay good it's always satisfying when you find something that one's not very good either Quite an awkward spot. You know what? I've got a special tool for this. I'll check this out. That's an automatic wire stripper made by Rensteig. Can you believe a, a viewer sent this to me all the way from Germany? It must have cost him a fortune. But these things are pretty sweet. Copper looks good, so we'll incorrectly twist those together. I don't know, can you guys see anything? This is a terrible place to work, an even worse place to try to film something. again here. This is why you always want to check. Be sure you got a good crimp. I know. Be sure to tell me in the comments that I should be soldering this. Now we got it, good deal. I'm gonna put a little bit of 
liquid electrical tape in the back side of that connector just to give it a little extra help since it has two wires sometimes they have trouble sealing well the block looks pretty clean the bolt is also clean but just to make sure that no electrons can flow through, we're gonna put a little dielectric grease on it. should be about done. I'm going to go through and clear the codes and then if we if we do have a new crank sensor we should do a crank relearn. Now we're going to use a little launch X431. I'm trying to like this tool but they're not making it very easy. I mean the thing constantly updates. It's basically worthless if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection and I, I just find it kind of clunky compared to the Autel. But it does work, and it's, it's really cheap, which shouldn't be overlooked. Yeah, it is on there, buddy. So we'll get the health report. Uh, what is this thing? Single zone. Manual. Oh God, I don't know. Let's just say no. All right, recirculation position command circuit open. So it's probably got a bad actuator. Lost communication with restraint mod. Yeah, we don't care about any of this stuff. So let's just clear that. Nothing that's gonna affect the way it runs. Okay, now let's go back and we'll see if we can uh, let's go back here. Common functions. Special functions. Crankshaft position variation relearn. Hit OK. Okay. Are we supposed to start the thing? Start an idle engine. Okay. Oh, come on. All right, we should be warm enough now. Let's see what she'll do. Okay, block the drive, blah, blah, blah. Cycle the ignition off to on. Okay. Apply and hold brake pedal. Start an idle engine. Turn air conditioning off. It appears to be off. Vehicle must be in park or neutral, okay. Okay, accelerate to wide open throttle, release when fuel cutoff occurs.
there we go. That's all there is to it. All right, folks, that's it for the Impala. It is fixed. Pretty simple job, really. I mean, test light, wiring diagram, a little bit of luck, and we homed in on the problem pretty quickly. I've got uh, just about an hour in the diagnosis and the repair of the ground wire and doing the, the crank relearn and you know putting a few covers back on. So they should be happy with that. Hopefully you're happy with the video. Let me know what you think. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.